Hello, my name is Alan Pickering. I'd like to show you a modification I've done on my Ross Yoke water cooled Stirling engine. I want it to run very slowly, and so what I've done is put a, a separate balance weight down here. Or two separate balance weights if you like because the engine was quite unbalanced this is one of the snags with the Ross Yoke design it's got a lot of ironmongery around it going up and down and it's quite difficult to balance so I've got two yokes on there and I've put these other two brass weights on onto one of them in order to get a smoother slower running engine it warms up very quickly and uh, I'll switch it on now if I can hold this camera reasonably still while I light the burner on with the gas there we go to move already. Just thinking about it. A little tweak. Fifteen seconds in cold. Now if I turn this plane down a bit, there we go. That should suddenly start, just tick it over, but I reckon about two turns per second. There's the water cooling tank, which goes down and feeds through this horizontal tube and cools the, second, the half of the displacement cylinder. This brass shield is just to keep the flames from going places where I don't want them. Little transfer pipe. A little valve underneath there, just to get rid of the oil, saves emptying the engine upside down. And a little tiny lever on here, just to make sure there's no air coming out of the, the thing. I turn, there you go, a drop of water coming out now. It shows that there's no air locks in there. Now this is running fast at the moment and I think if I was to turn the flame down a little bit there 
we go, the flame's nearly out. And you can't get much slower than that. There's no power there, mind you. But it's a demonstration engine. And uh, it'll go along like that for hours on end. And it's not using any gas. In fact, I can turn it down a bit now. There we go. Now how smooth is that? Yeah, I'm very impressed with that. It's not like a Chinese CNC engine screaming around at 3000 RPM. I built this in, when did I build it? 2018. Oh, that'll pick it up or not. Yeah, there we go. Nearly. I'll put this little sign on here. Do not fire without coolant water. That's because underneath here I've got a rubber gasket and with a, a flame there that wafting round it I wouldn't like anything uh, nasty to happen to it. It's quite hypnotic. Mind you, because it's running slowly, it doesn't want to run fast. I'll turn it up, get a little bit more go in it if I can. some power there. I could stop it if I squeeze hard enough. But it would drive something. I'll turn this down a bit. This is a little burner out of a camping um, camping sort of kettle boiling thing for when you go out hiking. It was only about a fiver and I made it into this big heavy lump here with magnets underneath and a little thing just to locate it like so. Saves the pipe pulling it all over the place. The reason it's running slowly is because it's reasonably well balanced uh, but the main thing is it's low compression and if you have a high compression engine or even more so one that's um, pressurized all they want to do is scream round and the displacer cylinder in this there's probably a three-eighths of an inch gap right round the cylinder 
and so there's an awful lot of free space in there and this is useless um, space uh, you don't normally want it but if you want your engine to run slowly you need a low compression otherwise it's jumping all over the place trying to get over top dead centre and so to get it smooth you've got to start making it run fast the cylinder I think it came out of a, a Siegel outboard motor it was a seized up thing that I found in the junk box about one and a half inches diameter and I put it into a stainless steel uh, cylinder this is the rush yoke mechanism a very difficult mechanism I found to make work I made the engine in about a month or something like this it took me another week to make it work simply because the alignments are so difficult to get 100% perfect and if they're not it just will not work you've got to get all these alignments here spot on and you can make these things up on the bench and get your alignments right when you get it to the engine just one thou here and there it'll stop the engine all these little parts here all these little things around here and here and in here and here they're all bearings some are little tiny ball races all oh, this is like the big end they're quite big lumps I just used what I'd got basically the length of the stroke can be adjusted by the length of this vertical um, arm here that's one of the peculiarities of the rush yoke design but to get the geometry right is an absolute sod there's no question about it well I found it so uh, I've built loads of engines uh, half a dozen hot air engines included and this one has been by far the most difficult um, from the design point of view I don't think there's another one anything like this, this is an inverted Ross yoke but there's nothing that you can't sort of pin down the length of the stroke and the bore and the length of conrods and the general bore of the thing you can't seem to pin it down on a sheet of paper it's got to be done on the bench with bits of cardboard and pins but in theory that's okay but in practice once you get it down to uh, lumps of metal and you start machining that's another story let me turn this down it's nearly screaming its head off it's like a buzz box a bit more like it so there we have it this is basically the, a quick look round around the workshop which is an extension of my double garage basically that's a slotted machine which is a bit of a white elephant now finished building the traction engines it was only really used for like, keyways polishing machine nobody should be without one of those and of course nothing you've got to have a bandsaw and in the corner a lovely little device called an XL surface grinder plough grinder 
BLC 180 amp welder and just through the curtain here you might be able to just see a bit dark to say the least but there is a hacksaw machine bench with all the drawers full of steel and bits and pieces old bread boxes from a bakery built the bench around them tapping machine quite handy but you can live without one no, it does taps things get them fairly square all the bits are hanging from the roof as you can see, everything is in arm's reach, basically. That's the, uh, the music system. Let me put the light on. Let's see if I can get a bit of light on the subject. There you go. 20 ton echo press quite a useful thing and that's for folding fodder goes up and down bits of material and so mending machine coordinate drill everything's three phase my big lathe, the big Mitchell. These are a few pictures of model engineer covers that I've had published in the past. And we go. Union grinder. Little bench grinder. a twist grill, dormer twist drill grinding machine. That's a diamond lap for um, doing tungsten carbide tip tools. Fine coal linisher, the most useful machine in the workshop by a long way with a carbide belt. Three Morse taper drill, electrisca. tool grinding machine there four grindstones on it another lathe tool grinder there's my pride and joy smart and brown model M had it forever there are all the quick change tool posts and collets and bits and pieces that go with it dehumidifier very very essential welding rod cabinet This is my big, big Mitchell. Very nice machine. Very cheap to buy. Only cost me 400 quid. This is one of the machines that built the Titanic, I think. Great big hole down the centre. Very useful. Little Corona drill. Another table on it. These are very useful. A couple of uh, compressors, 
joined together giving you 5 horsepower bought from a supermarket all piped up ready to go let's have a look what's going on down here there she is, look at that, still going round screaming its head off brown and sharp mill does everything if you know how to work it far too complex for me but the beauty of it is it's a uh, horizontal and vertical and the bed moves in all directions quite a rare bit of kit again this was used to build the Titanic little place where I do my silver soldering Spare bits and pieces, first aid, doesn't get used too often. Little wire brushing machine, another nice big vice. This is a, a cleaner for cleaning engine parts, full of diesel. Just moving into the, the garage, switch the light on. Not that there's a lot to see out here, but there you go. There's a picture of my big so cropper. Air supplies. So that's it then. That's uh, my little model engineering world. And last look at my little engine there, which I'm very pleased about. You can leave it running for hours on end, it's not using any gas, and it's not driving anybody stupid. Turn the gas down a bit. There it is. It's going to appear apparently on the pages of Model Engineer this year. There's supposed to be a front cover picture of it. There we go, you can't get much slower than that can you? So, that's Alan Pickering, signing off. And this is round about December 2018. And there it is, still going round, would you believe it? With no gas in it. <laughs>